Today I'm going to be showing you my best setup for the Assassin class. As you can see here, I have tried the Toxic Vanish setup, and it is fun to play, but it's very hard to stagger uh, enemies at spawn points with the on gold or nightmare. Today I'm be showing you. <coughs> I'm going to be showing you basically the three best ways to play the Assassin class. Now, I think personally, um, the first class I'm going to show you is the best one. But I also have tried out High Toxic Vanish, Hysteria, and uh, trying to burn them all out with the Dagger bonus on and the perk. But let me get into my build first. And ideally, you want the Swordsman because the largest heavy enemies you're going to be trying to assassinate anyway. The Spear Dudes are easy to parry and avoid. So are the Little Dudes. The most annoying ones are the Swordsmen with the Flame Shield. So, I like the Swordsmen, uh, the Anti-Swordsmen Stone Katana. So what we're going to have on here is melee damage, only because when we do attack an enemy, we do more damage. going to be having ability cooldown, of course, for our assassinations and way of the flame. So when we do attack, we can attack with some power. Now you will need the blowgun, and the blowgun, um, like in survival, um, it's probably not going to be used that much occasionally at the end of the game. But it's mostly for the stealth attack damage and the stealth, uh, the status effect duration. So when you do hallucinate somebody, it lasts longer. The charm we're going to be running is the Assassin's Charm. We're going to be looking for stealth attack damage primarily and hysteria. Vantage duration is good. Mainly you want a very high stealth attack damage. I'm still trying to get this up further. This is a very hard charm to do. I have spent probably like 3,000 honor. Maybe like 4,000 between these two charms trying to get a good roll uh, on the toxic setup in this setup. But... You definitely want the status attack damage and hysteria because we're going to be putting chain vanish in the perks. And I'll get into the strategy of this build in a moment. Vanish duration since we're running group. Uh, vanish anyway. When we do vanish and we do have to get a revive or we are with a group. Anytime we do vanish near other players they get it as well. And also because... In the way you play this in survival is you're going to be running into the spawn points as they spawn, assassinating one enemy and then getting out and just letting them all fight. Potentially assassinating two if you think you can assassinate two and get out and then go back and finish them off or just go to the next group and then come back and finish them off. Either or, Vanish Duration is really good. Alternatively, um, well actually for the first category, there really is none. It's really a Status Effect Duration or Vanish Duration are basically your two best options. Personally, I don't think you need the Status Effect Duration. I think Vanish Duration is a little bit better, especially for the group aspect. So for your ghost weapon of choice, you have two choices. You can use the dirt throw or you can use the sticky bomb. Personally, I like the dirt throw with both cooldown reductions and rancid. This way, I quickly have it pretty much whenever I need it. Sticky bomb also does stun and allows you to get kills, so that's not bad. Also hits all the enemies around but most often I'm just trying to weaken an enemy before I assassinate it or just to quickly take out a swordsman or whatever so uh, 
but I do like this with the two cooldowns, alternatively the Sticky Bomb. Now, if you're going to pick any Legendary, what you would want is either the Mist or the Blowgun. The reason for this being that it's very easy to then get a max stealth attack damage and the ideal roll that you want. The mist is very nice. I don't have the blowgun. I actually would go for the blowgun if I had the blowgun. Because it's a 20% chance to kill uh, any non-Oni enemies. But especially going in with like randoms or anything, if you do do that, you don't have any heal. And if you don't have a Ronin, then the mist is kind of nice. So you can heal yourself as well. And it's a very easy one to get the perfect roll on. This one won't be that expensive to do. You have two options for your last one. You can either run Southern, Re Southern Resolve, Resolve Black Powder. Well, actually three options. Munitions can come in handy in story mode a lot more than it will in survival and potentially in raid. But ideally, if you can get the roll with the cooldown reduction on kill or cooldown reduction, whatever you want. Um, I get a lot of kills. So I like cooldown reduction on kill. Uh, cooldown reduction is is also very good on high time ones like the 90 and the 120. And definitely stealth attack damage. For this one, it's very easy to swap out because it only requires the daily challenge and the flame, whatever those two are called. So you can kind of even just swap this one out if you're going to go do like a specific challenge or something. So on to the tree for this build. We're going to be running Group Vanish, as I said, for the ability to get everybody else and also for its cooldown time. Since we're not really staggering enemies as much and we're just hallucinating groups of enemies and letting them fight and minimizing how much we have to kill and getting easier assassinations because heavy enemies are wounded, we want the lower cooldown and giving our friends vanish. So we definitely want the stealth attack 2x so when it gets late game we can assassinate heavy enemies. Personally I like stealth attacks are faster and quieter especially going into the spawn point. I can quickly assassinate one and I can even assassinate a second one strategically sometimes and then get out. If I would not go for the second assassination almost always if I didn't have that on. Alternatively, you can use this. And uh, the poison dart does do stagger damage. Heavy stagger damage. So you can get that bonus assassination if you poison an enemy. And then you have the ability to go in and assassinate them. That is actually good too. I would definitely say one of the two. It's going to depend on your playstyle and what you feel comfortable with. This though is not an option. You will need cha Chain Vanish for this build. As I said, for survival you're going into spawn points. In story mode there's tethers and there's all types of situations where there's two enemies. So what you're going to want is to be able to assassinate one and at least assassinate one other enemy or put a crit into that enemy. So alternatively, your other build would be Toxic Vanish. And at this point, you have to put on Opportunist. You would still run the Chain Vanish. Oh, let me get to the right character. At this point, we would be looking for Hysteria or Chain Vanish, depending on what you want to do. Um, I think it would be Hysteria, Toxic Vanish Radius, and Status Effect Duration. This way we, well alternatively you could also do Toxic Vanish Radius and Stealth Attack Damage would also be really good. But because with this build we're going for that 50% extra stealth and we're trying to basically uh, just stagger groups of enemies. 
you probably could easily get away without having stealth attack damage. I would say with this card, because of how many choices you have, you really have two options. Both require a high toxic vanish. I would say at least 80% plus. Um, I mean, keep it if you got like 75% plus and then go for another one if you have two out of the three. Try to make a decent one to make a second one like I did. But you're going to be going with a high toxic vanish. Uh, hysteria. Alternatively, if you don't want to hallucinate everyone and you want three, you could run chain vanish, but I think hysteria. And then your other option would be either stealth attack damage or status effect duration. Both are very good. That is, uh, stealth attack damage is good overall. But if I would take the stealth attack, attack damage over the status effect duration because you need the status effect duration to be able to con assassinate the high enemies. Well, if you had the stealth attack damage, you would be able to do it anyway. So, um, or, 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 I, I actually, I really haven't tested this with the status effect duration too much um, because I didn't get that role yet. But I'm figuring I could still assassinate almost everybody else. But that would also would require a high stealth attack damage and a high stealth attack damage. So I know this build is very expensive and it is something to work, work towards. Both these builds are really good. Personally, I think that just going for the high stealth attack damage and uh, going for the vanish duration is better for all the modes. And it's a more versatile build. So that's why I am personally recommending this build over the toxic build. But I also did want to provide you the toxic build as well. Uh, third build is not that different. It's going to be uh, hallucination dart, same thing. This uh, pretty much same thing. Your charm is going to be stealth attack damage. Another one like vanish duration, something good. You can go with the sticky bomb or the dirt throw again, but. For your mist, it's actually going to be munitions, and this is generally for like a slow play way of just hallucinating enemies. This is more for like nightmare, and like if there's any crazy challenges where you just want to sit back and let all the enemies kill each other and make it easier. And once again, for when you do have to do that, like I was saying before, this mist is a very nice one to have because it's very easy to get the roll, go for the two, and then you have the ability to switch this out to munitions, sudden resolve, or black powder at any point in time. And uh, that are the three best builds for the assassin. If you feel that you have one as good or better, feel free to share. I hope that helps.